Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and today we are gonna watch some ho horror stories, animated though. Uh, so go subscribe to Llama Hearts. I already have subscribed. They have make so many good horror stories, and let's get right into the video. Christmas Eve horror story let's see it last year on christmas eve i was working late i'm 23 okay. i work in new york city and commute home every day on the train since I'm one of the younger ones in the office, I got stuck with one of the worst shifts, so I wasn't oh. able to get home until 5 o'clock. My family had already left a whole hour earlier to go to my cousin's house, so I had to drive alone. After having a quick snack before the half hour drive, I got back in my car and put my cousin's address into my phone. Okay. Halfway through the drive, it started snowing. Snowing? I got to my cousin's house around 6 o'clock. Okay. It was snowing heavily by this point, and I just made it in time to catch everyone starting dinner. Okay. I brought all of my gifts inside and cheerfully said hey to everyone. I stayed until around 11 o'clock. The rest of my family left a little sooner. I stayed an extra okay. half hour or so just to hang out before leaving myself. Okay. By the time I was leaving, the ground had accumulated at least two feet of snow, and wow. it wasn't even done snowing. <laughs> That's so much. The drive home was nightmarish. The roads were hardly even plowed, and I had to drive under 20 miles per hour on most roads. The roads were completely dead at this point though, most likely because everyone was smart enough to go home before the snow accumulated. Yeah. Eventually I turned onto a main road that I'm sure would usually be bustling, but at 11.15 on Christmas Eve night, there wasn't a single car or a single light from a store. Okay. It was a ghost town. But yeah. then I did notice the flashing taillights of one car. It was parked what? on the side of the road, no, no, and the no, smoke don't seeping out from its exhaust Do with the taillights it. giving it a red tint. Do As not I got closer, it, I realized there was somebody next to the car waving their hand in the air. Okay, okay, just I go, assumed but something was wrong and they get needed in, help. Don't so, talk me to being him, the good Samaritan anything, I am, bro. I pulled up behind the car. Don't get out of your car. When I opened my door, the guy approached me immediately, Bruh. barely even giving me time to step out. He was an average-sized man. Probably yeah, 5 foot 10, 180 pounds. You're dead, bro. He spoke in a very demanding voice, asking me if I know anything about fixing an engine. You don't know anything. I told anything. him I didn't know much about cars. Yeah. The guy responded very quickly to everything I said. He told me it's fine. He went inside of his car for a second, popped open his trunk, came back out, and told me to just wait by the trunk for a second. No! I had no idea what he wanted me to do. I was really confused. He walked over to the front of his car, and I heard him open the hood. I couldn't see anything he was doing since the trunk was blocking my view, and the loud wind of the snowstorm overpowered any small noises he might have been making. I put my hand on the back of the car and leaned my body in anticipation, when suddenly I heard three or four quick and aggressive footsteps in the snow behind me before I was pushed into the trunk. The man tried to close the trunk on me, but I kicked my feet up in resistance and held it up. Yes, I was able to yes, overpower him and get oh. the trunk open completely. As I took advantage of the few seconds I had to get out of the trunk, I took out my keys. He tried to grab me now, and I dug my house key right into his neck. <laughs> my bro just went Super Saiyan 1. <laughs> he was quick like... Quick as fuck. Let me rewind that shit. As I took advantage of the few seconds I had to get out of the trunk, I took out my keys. He tried to grab me now. Oh. I was key right into his neck. He fell to his knees and his scream echoed down the deserted street. I was in my car and halfway down the road before he could even get up from his knees. A little further down, I called 911 and reported the guy. I came back yes. in 10 minutes to find blue and red lights illuminating the windows yes. of the deserted stores. The police held him until the ambulance arrived for him. I watched the whole thing and nothing ever felt better in my life. I got yeah. home safely half an hour later and told my family everything. I was still very shaken that Christmas, and this remains possibly the most horrific thing I've ever experienced. 
wow.